Hi, we're going to look at sets. Sets and set theory is a concept used in all branches of mathematics. Set theory and logic have a close relationship. First, let us define sets and elements of sets. A variable is a letter that represents objects. A set is any well-defined collection of those objects. The objects within the set is called the elements or members of the set. For higher level mathematics, we look at abstract objects, objects that we can't really see or touch. But for understanding, we'll probably look at some more concrete examples of sets. For example, here are some concrete examples. All the cities in Alabama will be a set of the cities, and Alabama will be containing that set. The earth will be a set containing the people living on the earth. The solutions to x squared minus 3x minus 2 will also be a set, uh, and the countries in Europe will also be a set. A set will usually be denoted by a capital letter such as A, B, C, X, Y, and Z, while the lowercase letters A, B, C, X, Y, Z are usually the elements of the set. And we're not limited to two of these letters you have right here. Uh, it could be G, H, I, it could be anything you want, really, but it's typical to have the letters of the alphabet, the capital letters of the alphabet to be the set, and the lowercase letters to be the elements of the set. Now, we have two ways of specifying a particular set by listing its elements, such as the set A contains the elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Uh, here, the set contains odd numbers from 1 to 9. This is called the tabular form of a set. The second way is to state those properties which, which characterize the elements in the set. That is, properties held by the members of the set, but not by non-members. For example, here A is equal to X. The colon here represents such that. So X such that X is an even integer and the comma represent and, or we should consider this as well, x is greater than zero, which reads b is the set of x such that x is an even integer and x greater than zero. This is sometimes called the set builder form or property method of specifying a set. Two sets a and b are equal, written a equal b, if and only if they both have the same elements. So every element that belongs to A also belongs to B, and every element that belongs to B also belongs to A. The opposite of equality is A not equal to B, and that would be an equal sign with a slash drawn in the middle of it. The statement P is an element of A, or P belongs to A, is written as P, and we read this as belongs to A. Um, this can be extended to multiple elements. If, if, we take, if we were to take elements P and Q, both belonging to A, we would write P comma Q belongs to A. And if we were to write an element P that, that does belong to A, we would write P does not belong to A. So with the, the um, equality sign we have here, if I would say that they were not equal or they're the opposite of equality, it would be the equal sign with this slash here uh, coming down from right to left if you're facing the screen. The set A contains the letters in the alphabet English uh, can be written as A equal to X such that X is a letter in the English alphabet. So this is more examples of set, ways we can write sets. And it could be uh, letters, it could be numbers. If we let A equal to X such that X squared minus 3X plus 2 equal to 0, then B equal to 1 comma 2 would be equal to A because the answer for this, where X squared minus 3X plus 2 equal to 0, is where, a, where X is equal to 1 or X equal to 2 and b equal to 1, comma 2, then a equal b are both the same thing. They're equivalent because they contain the elements 1 and 2. 
Some sets are common, and because they are common, we have symbols for them. Um, you've seen this before, I'm certain. Uh, the set of natural numbers, integers, real numbers, complex numbers, and rational numbers. Uh, listing elements to describe a set is an option, but it's not always a practical thing to do, particularly if the set is very large like we have here. We typically list the elements to describe the set only if the set contains only a few elements. We really want to use set building notation when we have a set that contains a lot of elements. All sets are soon to be contained in some larger set called the universal set or universe. For example, the set of even numbers are within the set of integers. We denote the universal set by u in most cases. If we are given a universal set and a property C, there may be no element in U which has the property C, that particular property. This set will, with no element is called the empty set or null set as it is denoted by our empty set symbol there, what we have here, our empty set or null set symbol. The empty set is unique and if A and B are both empty, then A is equal to B because the empty set is unique. That's all I have for you. I will see you in the next video. Take care and I will talk to you later.